all right welcome back to the channel i hope everyone is doing well today in this video we're going to be doing a film study for the ibf cruiserweight world champion jaya obataya now this young man has got a very interesting fascinating style he's a boxer puncher he, he likes to fight, he can. He has that Eastern European pendulum step that he uses, he can box off the back foot, he can counter punch. Oh. And look, he, he has got tremendous desire, ambition, and he, he wants to, to go up to heavyweight and take on the big boys once he's cleaned out the cruiserweight division. If I'm getting the pick and I'm going to sort of choose who I get to fight, It'll be someone with a belt. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? Because I want to win these belts and then I want to move up to heavyweight. So, you know, the, the sooner I win these belts and the sooner these fights happen, the better. for Not just for me, but for, for everyone, I feel, you know. The way he's talking is quite impressive. And he's been boxing since a young kid. He's what I call a thoroughbred. I had the one goal my whole life, you know what I mean? It was always fighting. Fighting, fighting. And we're going to talk and dissect his style. I'm going to go over all the things that I think he does really well. And there's one or two things that I've noticed that he gets hit with, with the same punch and why he gets hit with, and what small improvements I think he could make. Let's get into the video. Yeah, boxing has always been my number one priority. You know, it's always come first. And, you know, ever, ever since I was a kid, you know, I, anything I had on or whatever plans we had boxing. As soon as a fight would come up, that was my number one priority. And that's how it's always been in my life. Shout out to all the subscribers as always. Thank you very much. And shout out to anybody new locked in. Gratitude to you. Let's get into the video because I've been... Shout out to uh, this one of the subscribers, Justin, who recommended me make a video on Jaya Bataya. Now, obviously, I'd, I'd heard of him and I'd watched the Braiders fight. That was the first time I, I'd, I'd really... Well, he was announced to me what a fight that was and then obviously he he fought jordan thompson recently and totally destroyed him so someone asked me to do a, a little video on him so this is it we're going to be doing a film study on him but i want to just go into what style of fighting he has before i get into the video and just express my excitement on his style because it is it is an eastern european style right he has that bounce which is called a pendulum step, okay, which is based off of timing and rhythm, which usually can be to your advantage, but there are times if you can get caught, which I'll show you in the video, that at the end, it can be timed from a very high level fighter, but generally speaking, he likes to bounce, mount his attacks, and he's got fast feet as well. We're gonna get into all of that, but he can step back and counter punch. He's got a really nice sneaky check hook as well. He's got a beautiful variety of punches. Okay, he can throw punches from all angles. He's got power and he's tenacious, obviously. And as I mentioned in the beginning, his will and his heart is, is probably what's going to take him very far on top of the fact that he's been boxing a very long time and he's spoken about this a lot and it's like, it's all he's done. I was just always training. Any, I wasn't allowed to do anything, go hang out with my mates until I trained first. So. You know, when you when you rear somebody from such a young age just to, to fight, the discipline that's involved with that, the sacrifice, obviously, all of that, but just the muscle memory that you're developing and, and how good you can get, it is kind of exciting and frightening to see how far this guy can go because, like I said, he wants to take on the big boys once he cleans out the cruiserweight division. And let's be honest, he probably will. So let's get into the video without me rambling anymore because i'm excited to show you what i think of this dude so okay so what i was explaining in the beginning the pendulum step for those of you who don't know what that is that is or a pendulum bounce it's where you know he's bouncing back and forth usually in the in a in a line okay excuse the train here it's a little noisy we're in new york city right now but we're going to keep it moving because this clip is a perfect example of him using rhythm, using his pendulum step, but also his very quick feet, okay? And, and this is very Usyk-like as well. If you watch Usyk fight, he's a southpaw, Obataya, obviously Usyk is too. And your main, not main, but one pretty important objective is to get your foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot, okay? Thus, 
creating a better angle for you to get the back hand off okay or you get you get better leverage you don't have to do this with the jab if you step inside with your lead foot you can get jabs off but the backhand which is open ties you know bread and butter actually he's got a lot of different punches we're going to talk about which are amazing really but his backhand is is very deadly but it's his foot speed as well okay and the timing of it which offsets his opponents when he's doing that pendulum step, okay? And then he steps in and then he strikes. It's like a snake a little bit, yeah? Snakes don't bounce like that, but when they strike, they strike. And we'll slow this down here. You see Obatai's bouncing, and you know, Jordan Thompson's just got this kind of weird long guard, which looks like he's almost blocking his own view, <laughs> but I can't really see from here. But look, Obatai, when he's ready to make his move, okay, this step here, look at this bounce see that on the ball of his foot he's got a lot of weight and he's what 200 pounds okay he barely even barely even moves that ball of the foot that's some unbelievable athleticism right there okay normally a lot of fighters would sit down or at least the front half of your foot he's on the ball of his foot like a ballerina springing look at this boom step now when he steps okay he's using the ground for to, to generate as much power as he can flat foot you use the ground, you, your relationship from your with your foot with the ground is a very important one to get maximum power. He's, 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 he's pressing down on his foot, sitting down on his punches, it's called. Backhand now is in line because, because he stepped over, right? Because his foot is on the outside. Jordan Thompson tries to post him or frame him, which is never going to work really. And then bang, beautiful shot. Full, full shot and look Obatai is still not out of position okay he put a lot into that shot and because his foot and his balance was so good he remains in position great shot and I think this is the end of the fight now where Jordan Thompson grabs onto his uh, <laughs> his cup but look I, I, that's that's the main style his pendulum step but we're going to talk later on how it can also it can if you're a very very good fighter you can time the pendulum step to their to their disadvantage so let's 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 let, take another clip at, at his, his um his pendulum stepping because it's 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 just an awesome awesome rhythm and see look his in this episode here against Breedis in the fourth round two minutes left he he's pendulum stepping okay and Breedis Breedis actually was he's a smart fighter because later on in the in this fight he he understood and how he tried to time it properly but here. Opatai has got a bit of a, a safety net with it because he can counter punch off the back foot as I'm about to show you. He also is defensively nice with it and will use a long guard which, will, which I'll show you right now. If the pendulum step isn't working or if he's about to get timed like here, he's trying to, he's trying to find his entrance here. Bradis kind of sees it, comes in with a jab and he's backing off. Now it doesn't look the prettiest, right? But with his long guard out like that, that creates punching traffic, which makes it a little harder to see, and it makes it clogs up the lane for punches, right? So this isn't the best example, but Bradis is unable to get through. Obatai recognizes it, he's coming back, but then also look, look at this. He fires off a hook, doesn't really land, but he's got, uh, he's not, not a hook, his backhand. He's got that in his back pocket. If he's coming back, shooting back, he can shoot off a hook. That was me in an orthodox position. I'm not a southpaw, but you know what I mean. And here's another example in the in the fourth round against Bradis, right? He's bouncing here, pendulum stepping in, okay? It, as I said, it, it makes it a lot harder for, for your opponent to time him, for his opponent to time him. And this is a good example. He pendulum steps, Bradis is a little clumsy with the with the counter because it's a moving target, okay? It's moving like that, and he's, it's, like I said, harder to time. Ducks the shot. And then loops round with a very unorthodox overhand left catches him there. That that is that is another part of Obatai's game, is he can pull out very off the cuff instinctual shots or combinations based off of the, the foundation of his pendulum step. So it creates a lot of confusion. And then when he's there, he, I'm sure he meant to do that, but it did look like a very unorthodox, beautiful shot, which he just kind of sprung on Bradis and it landed clean. It was a great shot. And now talking about different unorthodox combinations, here's another one. Opatire again, the base of basis of his of his attack 
here. He's 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 pendulum stepping here. Okay, bouncing. Now he's in range. Now this is actually important because this is where later on Breedis is able to time him. When you're in the middle of a pendulum step and you're not actually punching or you're not doing anything, there's an opportunity. More on that later. But right here, he doesn't see Breedis doesn't launch any punches, so Abataya meets him to it. Two and then boom. Very unorthodox combination, but the third one caught him by surprise. A one-two one which was actually a 2-1-2 two, two for a southpaw. That that was weird, and that last shot, well, because of its unorthodoxy, caught Breedis bang on the chin by surprise because it was a rhythmical combination, but almost looked like a creative, instinctual um, shot, that last one. But again, over time, very good at doing that. Now he's back on the pendulum step and he's ready to bounce out of the way if he needs to, which he does repeatedly. So it can be used for offense and defense constantly, even, even when punches are being thrown and even when they're not. It's a very beautiful style if you can master it. He hasn't mastered it yet, in my opinion, because I'll show you again as I keep talking about how he does actually get caught with it. But a little bit of head movement if he could add to his game or just maybe not stay in the line because he can stay on the line sometimes and that, that is a straight right hand which you know what I'll show you right now. I keep talking about it. Let me let me show you right now how how it can work against him. And I'm not saying he can't master it. By the way, I think he probably will because look, here, here's several here's several several shots right of where Obatai is here and he's bouncing and he's in range and he's in line and his head is just right on the line. Okay, and he just stopped bouncing and Brady has picked up on this. Okay. Boom. See that shot there? All right, it grazed on Obataya's hand. Whether that was deliberately blocked, I don't know. If it was, that's, an, that's, a great, um, <laughs> that's a great move if it was. And then he's countering at the same time. But the point is, you'll see in these next shots, it's a reoccurring thing where his head is on the line and he gets clipped with a, a straight right hand. So right here, next one. See, when he's not pendulum stepping, or even if he is, and he gets caught in between doing nothing, Breeders spots that, okay? And he comes in with a one, two, boom. Hits, oh, that's the same sequence, but it's a diff different angle. But he blocks it and he still tries to counter. But here again, here, you have it here. This is a perfect example where he where he's bouncing and he actually stops bouncing, doesn't punch. Breeders catches him. If you look right there, he catches him right there when his feet set. And when your feet set, there's a split second for you to attack. And that's exactly what Breeders does. Right here, bang, good shot, caught him right there. And you know, he clinches in the end, but it's head on the line, right in the middle, a backhand, right hand from the uh, unorthodox fighter. If you can catch the timing of that, you know, it's not easy because obviously he's probably gonna be throwing something, but there, there are moments. Here it is again, it might be the same one. He kind of over ties, bouncing, but he's not bouncing forward or back. And Bradis sees that, and right there, as he stopped bouncing, he launches his attack. Boom! That might be the same one from a different angle, but you know what I'm saying. Where there are some opportunities, if he is in punching range and he's just bouncing or is on the on the end of a bounce or just met the bounce without punching, he's got a few. Bradis has a few milliseconds to strike his to to land his attack. Here it is again. Over tire bouncing. This is eighth round. Eighth round. Two minutes forty just gets caught in no man's land bouncing bouncing doesn't come to a lot wasn't the cleanest of shots but again head on the line and you know he's able to to try to counter but Bradis you know landed fairly clean there head on the line right hand bang so there's a good there's a I counted at least six or seven straight right hands which isn't that much he's got pretty good defense over tire but the one reoccurring thing was the straight right hand because he was in the middle not always in the middle of a pendulum step, but his head was just on the line. I think maybe a bit of head movement, like I mentioned. If he added that, not while you're pendulum stepping, because that's the thing, when you are pendulum stepping, I mean, look, if you watch Usyk, he's kind of doing, he's, he's, got, he's got both down, Usyk, 
to be honest. He's got more upper body torso than head movement. It's the same, similar thing, but it's like he's able to mix it all together, which is unbelievable coordination. And I'm sure Opatire can get there. I'm sure he can, because you would, you, you would think that they would want to develop this. Because right now, he's got very few, very few flaws. And it's just, it's just more, more something to improve on than a major flaw. It just comes with the style, I think. You know, if you, if you know anything more about this, enlighten me in the comments. You know, I, I'd love to hear from you. The fact I, I, I have a boxing channel, I know nothing about boxing. That's the way I view it. I, I try to read. I wake up every morning and I'm like studying. I spend more time studying, you know, the, the, the techniques and stuff than I do the actual news of boxing. So sometimes I can get behind on that, but I'm, I'm like acting every day. I wake up every morning thinking about <laughs> thinking about boxing every morning, and I'm like, oh, what can I learn today? Scrolling on Instagram. So I, I but I'm, I'm always open ears. All right, let's move on to Jay Opatire's chin because I made a short video the other day saying who has the best chin in boxing, and look, I, I just reeled off a handful of contestants and. After watching him, I'm thinking he's probably up there because you know when you try to get a chin check and a heart check from a fighter, we found out this, at least I did. Perhaps there was previous fights where people knew that his jaw was seriously tough. But in this fight, and then it confirmed it in the in the Jordan Thompson fight. Look at this shot here. Boom. Now this is the shot that broke his jaw, right? It broke his jaw in the tenth round. Okay, and he didn't let his corner know. Well, I didn't tell none of the corner because I didn't want no stress. <laughs> and he gutted out. Even in that round, you know, you could tell he was hurt. You could tell his, his face was a bit deformed later on. He didn't, that's serious stoicism. I'm making a video about that soon. Being stoic in boxing is a dying, a dying, uh, I guess it's a philosophy, but a, 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 um, a, uh, <laughs> a state of emotion it's basically just obviously being stoic is not complaining getting on with suffering basically and that's exactly what he was doing he was massively suffering in this you could see it his, his body language he clinched on there but you listen to what he was saying about that and this is what makes you think wow this guy is he, he's going to have to take a seriously good skilled fighter to, to beat him I think because He's not. You're not going to outwill him, I don't think, because he proved it. Unless you've got a tougher will than that, maybe. But it's pretty, pretty bloody high, <laughs> you know. All right, that's the great shot. Okay, that would have put most fighters down. Let alone made them, you know, not quit, but just put them in their shell a little bit. But no, he came. He came out in the eleventh, and he was all gone. In fact, at the end of the tenth, I'll try and pull up a clip where he was still going for it and actually threw the same punch that Braid is caught him with. Obatire came in with that backhand that he got countered with. It's almost like it never happened to him. He's short memory. Amazing. I think this is it here. Look at this. He th he throws the exact. All right. Okay. He started with the jab, but he got he got countered with the right hand, which he throws another right hand. This is with a broken jaw. <laughs> He's got Bradis against the ropes. Tough dude, man. I'm telling you. Look at here's the uppercut from another angle. Bradis, beautiful timed slip and the outside Bradis comes with an uppercut bang what a shot right that's Obatire's chin but let me show you this clip from um, the Jordan Thompson fight where he gets cracked on the chin and I'm not sure I don't know that much about Jordan Thompson how powerful he is but he's a long guy right and he gets all of his um, size behind this shot look at here it is end of the third or beginning of the third and actually if you watch this here this is back back on what i was saying about um how obatai is a tiny bit vulnerable i don't think jordan maybe jordan thompson did pick up on this but once again he completes this sort of step pendulum step here right he ends up in the mid range in punching range not stepping and not doing anything and gets cracked with a massive one massive one two watch this bang all right, so not only does not only does he take that right, he comes right back <laughs> with a <the> right hook. <laughs> That's crazy. Look at look at this shot. Again, I don't know how powerful Thompson is, but that looked like a pretty mean shot. Bang on the chin that he's got his whole arm through right, and he he put some sauce onto that. 
Jared Bataille took it on the chin, gathered himself, bang, shoots the right hook. I mean, you have to have a good chin to be able to do that, and you have to have a resilient heart to be able to take a shot on the chin like that and just brush it off and <laughs> come straight through. And now here he is trying to bully Thompson right after getting clipped with a massive right hand. Crazy. Crazy. All right, so this is this is actually, let's talk about his counter punching, right? This is a beautiful scene because this is a shout out to um, all the content creators that make these videos that we content creators, you know, uh, use for fair use, but you know, I'm hardly going to go around and email everybody to see if I could use their content, but I'm always grateful. And in fact, there's an interview that I'm using some of these clips from. I'll leave it in the comment section. Base the Kid, I think his name is, dude from London, got an interview with Jail Bataille. It's a great interview, and he's got a nice channel, and he knows his boxing, and I'll leave the link in the description. And thank you for letting me use the content. <laughs> but look, here he is, Obataya, look at this. This is what makes a pendulum step very difficult to time as well. And you got you got him bouncing in the mid, and he just steps back here, all right, out of range, I'll slow it down again, Thompson. Look, he times that, he times the right hand here, Thompson's, and Obataya lean, leans back, cocks his left hand, bang. And now it's a, obviously a bit risky because he's, he's in almost a borderline 50-50 situation right here. But because of his speed, because of his timing, straight a shot too, he's able to land it, bang, and he catches Thompson right on the chin, and, and he was coming in with that too. He must have really felt that. My bat my battery just ran out. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that was a great shot, counter punch. So look, this is just the amount of weapons he's got. You know, I'll show you. I'll show you some more. Some more. Um, look at his jaw here. Look at that. This is a tough dude. He, you know, this is, like, we, I know I go quite hard on people that quit. Anyone who watches the channel. And shout out to you, Hat Man. I watched your video on Andrade. It got me thinking a little bit. If you're not actually in a position to win, yeah, or maybe I should just ease back a little bit. <laughs> but, but, if you take someone like J.O. Obataya, right, who, let's just be honest, I'm not saying most fighters would have quit, but they would have probably stopped trying to win. And he won a world title because of because of who he is and what he was committed to do. And that was just an amazing moment for him and for the rest of his life. And it could have gone the other way. Let's just say he did quit and he wasn't I'm not saying he would have ever. But another fighter that was in a position. You could you could take that moment in your life, in your historic history of life, and think, damn, I, I didn't get this. I didn't get this because I did that. But I got this because I didn't quit, because I pushed on and I dug in. Different scenario, I know, with the Andrade one, because he was really getting beaten up and he really, it didn't look like he had much of a chance against. And as I said, when fighters are doing that, they feed off of that fear. So it's just one way direction, a slightly different situation. But my point is, you know, it, um, it's just, don't quit. <laughs> All right, let's look at some of his, um, more of his punch selection, okay? Because this is another thing that makes, well, let, let's actually, let's, let's actually talk about his defense, okay? Because he uses the pendulum step, as I mentioned, but he's backing out. Sometimes he goes in a straight line, he, he veers off to the side a little bit, but he uses this long guard, right? which is again very eastern european typically if you're a taller fighter or a bigger fighter like you know let's just say klitschko for example but you know don't you don't need to be bivol uses it he's got bivol has got one of the best lead hands in the game and he uses it with just a beautiful fashion but if you watch how when he hits the bag he's like bam 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 and then it's up there like that okay a lot of fighters do that that's just to prevent it's putting your arm in punching traffic, which prevents or makes it more difficult to see and more difficult for the punches to come through without getting deflected. If something gets deflected with your hand, it's gonna take a massive amount of steam off it, a massive amount, and that's why it's been done, because it can just deflect shots. If you look, look right here, this is a good example. He's, using, he's backing off. All right, this is in the third round, 247 left. JL Bataille is backing off. Breedis is trying to come through. And that long guard really 
pours down, uses it for punch and traffic. It's not the best example, but it makes it difficult and he's moving back at the same time. And it just shuts the offense down momentarily. If you do that repeatedly over a course of a fight, it makes it more frustrating for a fighter to get through. And here it is again. He's backing off. And see there, the guard's there. It's not quite in front of Breedis' face. This is right in the first round, 22, 222. It's not quite in his face, but there it is. He's using it just to just to try to set him off balance a little bit. And just the smallest of touches can do that. All right, and then Bradis falls short with there because big part of that was the movement, but his long guard control. But he uses the long guard and also he uses that and then he can counter with that backhand or the right hook. And I'll try to find a clip. Here's another one with the long guard. Um, it's in punching traffic there. He's backed up. Bradis can't see as well. And it's just a little awkward, but it's effective. Yeah, here it is. This is this is in the twelfth round. Obatai still bouncing there, parries it down, so he's backing up, parrying it, and look, he doesn't counter there. Or oh, actually, there he does. He tries. See that right hook? This is in the twelfth round. He tries to back off here, so he's moving backwards, and he's he, look. The, the counter landed. It wasn't a powerful shot, but I've seen him do that where he's backing off and he can shoot a right hook. And it doesn't matter how hard it lands if you I mean obviously it does if you're trying to damage, but if you're just trying to use it as a defensive weapon, you can use it to push your opponent off, turn off and, and spin it. A very Eastern European thing again with a check hook. He does it more uneducated, I would say, because he's just going back. It's still athletic, but a lot of you watch the Eastern Europeans, they'll whip it and they'll move off to the side, getting off the line. And that's a big part of a check hook. But this is this is kind of a check hook. But he still stays on the line a little bit too too long for me. But look, that, I think that's it for me. I've been going for a long time. My battery ran out in the middle of this. I've been rambling. Uh, sometimes I want, you know, don't, I don't even know how long these videos are. But I'm going to put it out anyway. It's going to be a lot of editing. But summary: Jay Obataya, Jay Obataya, excuse me, Samoan. I know his heritage is Samoan. He's Australian. He is a, a beast. Okay, he's got obviously good power solid foundations a great style he's game he's got a heart he's got a chin he's got a great punch selection he can counter punch and he is he's got an amazing attitude okay it just seems to have an unbreakable will and a desire to really really be the best he can be and that is an absolutely amazing thing for boxing Big up to the Australians. Shoot a comment in the comment section if you have any anything to add or anything that you found interesting or anything that you liked. If you are new, hit the subscribe button for more videos. And if you did enjoy the video, it's got to come from here. As always, hit the like button. I'm getting out of here. I've got to edit this video. Peace and love. I'll see you soon. Boxing on the edge. Yeah, boxing has always been my number one priority. You know, it's always come first. And, you know, ever, ever since I was a kid, you know, uh, anything... I had on or whatever plans we had. Boxing. As soon as a fight would come up, that was my number one priority. And that's how it's always been in my life.